Make sure to use code BANGLE at sign up on FanDuel for a $20 deposit bonus. And check out my second channel for other games coming up like Red Dead Redemption 2 and Call of Duty Black Ops 4. As well as my third channel with collaborations with some of your favorite YouTubers. Let's get into the video. What's going on guys? Bengal again here today coming back at you with another video today. We're going to be rebuilding the Seattle Seahawks. Obviously this is a team that has faced a lot of injury concern. Earl Thomas out for the year with a broken leg. Most likely not returning to Seattle in real life. Cam Chancellor probably will never play a snap again in the NFL. Bobby Wagner's faced some injury concern. So this is a really interesting uh, team going forward. We're going to try to rebuild them in a realistic style. So not really any player for player trading. Mostly just drafting, free agency, that sort of thing. So without further ado, let's go ahead and jump into this thing. So this is the lineup. This is the roster. Russell Wilson is the quarterback. Brett Hundley is the backup. We also have Chris Carson, Mike Davis, Rashad Penny, J.D. McKissick. I never knew. Is it McKissick or McKissick? I, I don't know. I feel like it would be McKissick, but that sounds bad to me. So, whatever. Rashad Penny will be the starting running back. Drafted him the first round this past year, uh, late in the first. And we need him to develop as quickly as possible if he is going to be that bell cow running back. That's a really good face scan, too. Um, so he's going to start Doug Baldwin, Tyler Lockett, Brandon Marshall, obviously not the trio that's going to be there because Brandon Marshall is not going to be on this team for too long. Uh, Jerron Brown could be a better slot receiver. So we might go ahead and put him there. Ed Dixon's a tight end. Uh, there's not really too much going on. The offensive line needs to be overhauled in a big way. Dwayne Brown has been solid in the NFL over his career. Excellent left tackle with the Texans has been Okay with the Seahawks. The rest of the O-line is not as good. J.R. Sweezy needs to be replaced. Justin Britt probably needs to be replaced. we got to replace DJ Fluker. Jermaine Fetty is terrible. And then the tight end situation here is Ed Dixon, Nick Vanette, and of course Will Disley now that we uh, reorder the lineup to have it with the healthy guys. And Will Disley also. None of these guys in-game are starting caliber to me. And then defensively, Cam Chancellor is not going to play. And... Cutting him is probably going to be a huge penalty. And that's, that doesn't look like a great face scan at Cam Chancellor. Like, it looks like him, but it's not great. So what we're going to do is... Um, can we change how old he is? Yeah. We're going to make him 40 years old. So hopefully he retires at the end of the season and we're not going to play him. We're going to make him a... Uh, I don't know, a punter or something. Because he doesn't play in real life. Because I think he retired. Or he, like he, I know he posted something on Instagram about retiring, and then I guess he is not officially retired, even though he's hanging up the cleats. So technically, he's not retired, even though he is. So Bradley McDougal, who's actually played well this season, will start at strong safety. Earl Thomas, who is injured, will start at free safety, and I am going to try to retain Earl Thomas at all costs. One of my favorite players in NFL history, top five for sure, but he doesn't want to go back to the Seahawks. We will offer him a new contract. I'm totally fine with that. I don't have to be the Seahawks. Michael Kendricks is going to be in jail probably before long with the insider trading info. So the defense with Cam Chancellor, who's retired, basically. Earl Thomas, who doesn't want to play on the team and is injured. Michael Kendricks, who's going to jail. It's a weird group of players, but they are pretty good. Of course, Shaquem Griffin, B. Wags, K.J. Wright, Barkevius Mingo should not be a 79 in my opinion. You also have Shaquille Griffin. Who's this? Justin Coleman, how good are you? 88 speed, 77 man, 81 zone. Uh, not terrible, but probably can do better. Um, defensive line, Frank Clark is good. Jerron Reed is good. Nas Jones is good. I want to get Malik McDowell developed, but it's just not going to be possible. It really it really won't be. Um, it's a good defensive line, though. Deion Jordan has played so well for the Seahawks in terms of getting pressure last year and this year. Former top three pick, the Dolphins traded up to get him, number three overall. And he just hasn't worked out because he can't stay off the drugs. But it's all good. Keeps getting suspended, but maybe he's not doing that anymore. So, good for him. But, uh, yeah, that's the team. I guess there's not really too much to do before the offseason. So, we're just going to uh, simulate, I should say, straight to the midseason mark. Not sure how this team's going to perform. I have a very good quarterback in Russell Wilson, but again... Like, you never know how teams are going to perform in simulation. I've been saying it over the course of all these rebuilds, which you can find in the rebuilding playlist. Over the course of this year, I've been saying it. 
it's so inconsistent but we are six and one with this seahawk team so maybe their playbooks are good which is pretty much what determines that not even top of the nfc west as the rams are seven and one niners four and four cardinals two and six but we are performing way better than i thought we would really we are gonna upgrade these players and then go to re-signings we actually have a lot of free agents or impending i should say a lot of playmakers on this team will not be on this team next year dj fluker 27 he's actually decent he's not terrible lead block is very low clearly not face scan in the game uh i don't want to pay him four million per year so i'm out on dj fluker i'm out on Dion jordan i just want to get better and younger michael kendricks is going to require like uh, a little bit less than i thought if i offered him a four-year deal I don't really want to pay him this though. We're not gonna we're not gonna pay Michael Kendricks either. Love Sebastian Janikowski. Not gonna pay Sebastian Janikowski. KJ Wright is 29. Only an 83 overall. Not developing very quickly at all. He is solid. We can eventually do better. I would sign him to a to a two year deal, at the most. Let's see if he accepts that. He doesn't, he doesn't like anything about it money-wise. I don't want to pay you, is the thing. Frank Clark actually, like, absolutely needs to come back. I would offer him a six-year deal worth just under five per year. And Frank Clark accepts. And Earl Thomas, as I stated previously, is a must-bring back for me. Five-year deal till he's 34. Obviously, again, not face can of the game. Holy hell. Oh my goodness, I just, I'm watching Patriots Bears, and Trubisky just threw it to the one on a Hail Mary, and it was caught, and he couldn't get into the end zone as time expired. It was caught by Kevin White. All right, unreal. Regardless, back to this game now. Uh, unreal, what a catch, and he just couldn't get in the end zone. He was stopped a yard short, that's crazy. Um, I would give Earl Thomas... 8 per salary, 3.6 on the signing bonus, 69.3 per year over 6. And Earl Thomas returns. I think that was a priority. Superstar free safety. We have to keep him in Seattle. We missed the playoffs. We went 9-7. and seven. That just shows you like the, the way simulation works, I swear. Look at this. No force wins, obviously. Nothing like that. So... This is how we played the rest of the year. We lost six games after week eight. One, two, three, four, five, six. Unbelievable. To miss the playoffs. Wow. Russell Wilson, 3,500 yards, 31 touchdowns, only nine interceptions. Just the yards aren't there at all. And then rushing. I tried to make Rashad Penny the starting running back. I didn't go to the depth chart. I just tried to do it on the home screen. And I guess... The glitch is back to where it auto resets your depth chart even when you don't reorder it um, yourself. So Rashad Penny split carries with McKissick and Chris Carson. They all averaged like under 3.5 per carry. Seven touchdowns for Carson. Terrible year. Absolutely terrible for every running back involved. Receiving. Doug Baldwin had a pretty good year. Great year. 885 yards, nine touchdowns. Not incredible, but very good. Tyler Lockett, 800 yards, only four touchdowns for him. He was a real go-to possession receiver. Ed Dixon had seven touchdowns. We got to change up this offense. Dwayne Brown, the entire offensive line, honestly, didn't let up a whole lot of sacks, but got to get better from a run-blocking standpoint. Defensive line was fantastic, except for getting pressure on the quarterback. Frank Clark led our team with seven sacks, and that is abysmal. And then interceptions, four for Bradley McDougal, three for Shaq Griffin, or Shaquille, I should say, three for Trey Flowers, three for Justin Coleman. Earl Thomas even managed to haul one in. And then force fumbles, only one for the entire team. It was Trey Flowers. We recovered zero of them and had no defensive touchdowns. A really embarrassing year overall. Tom Brady won the MVP. Any Seahawks in here? No. NFC Offense Player of the Year is Jared Goff. Russell Wilson at number 10. Defense Player of the Year, Jake Ryan. B-Wags in there at number 7. Offensive Rookie of the Year goes to Saquon Barkley. Rashad Penny at number 8. Defensive Rookie of the Year is Roquan Smith. Trey Flowers at number five. No other Seahawks. Just a really bad year, especially starting 6-1. and one. 
and then rallying to not make the playoffs? Just terrible. So, now to the offseason. I would consider franchise tagging, and you can see how they, they drop down. KJ Wright's down to an 81. I'm just going to leave them. I don't like regression at all. I hate it very much. I think it's way too overpowered in franchise right now. I think uh, a lot of people would agree with me, even at EA, per se. But, like, it's just, it's too strong right now. But we have so much money to spend that we can afford to bring in some top guys. Now, I know I bring them in a lot, but Dante Fowler Jr. would fit this team perfectly. We lost Deion Jordan. We could play Dante Fowler right end, Frank Clark left end. That would fit both of their schemes, I'm pretty sure, currently with what we have going on. This is a must pickup for us. I didn't realize the Dolphins offered so much. We do have the money, but I don't know if I'm trying to pay Dante Fowler Jr. like top pass rusher money. I think the most I would consider offering him is 50 million over the five. That ups it to 109. I wouldn't go much further than that. All right, so we brought in Trevor Williams. Dante Fowler rejected. Jake Elliott's in. So we have our kicker in Jake Elliott. And we brought in a new cornerback in Trevor Williams. That's good. We have great special teams now. A great young core in Michael Dixon. Hook em horns, might I add. And now Jake Elliott. Brought in a good cornerback in Trevor Williams. That's a great combo with Shaquille Griffin. And we are just weak at right end. It's going to need to be a good uh, draft for us. And we will go ahead and download a realistic class, a real class for the 2019 draft. And the last one we used, as I mentioned, was terrible. I'm going to go back and see if anyone recommended anything in my Giants franchise uh, realistic rebuild from last time. Actually, you know what? I appreciate Beath Crown, a.k.a. Keith Brown. I appreciate his confidence. He says, the official 2019 draft class, over 150 hours of research. This is what I do. Enjoy and please leave a like. Well, we're going to see if this is what you do, Beef, because I would say it's what I do. I watch tape of college prospects, and I think I would know a thing or two about how players should be rated and ranked. Let's go ahead, Beef. Let's see what your lineup is. Let's see what your draft class is, I should say. Is it any good? We're going to find out. All right, so we don't really have anything scouted here because I forgot to bring it in, and I brought it in really late. The rankings seem solid. It does. The rankings seem really solid. For quarterback, uh, I obviously don't agree with Drew Locke being number one, but that's all right. I think Will Greer is very good. Probably won't be a first-round player due to his age. Herbert, I guess, is returning now, but we're going to leave him available. Shea Patterson, Nick Fitzgerald, Ryan Finley. Ryan Finley should be higher. Um, there is no Easton Stick. He, he didn't do... So you have Jarrett Studham, but you don't... Instead of Stidham, and you have Army. I'm very confused with that. So there's Jarrett Stidham out of Auburn that is not in this class, but there's Jarrett Studham out of Army. Is this what he does? Interesting. Halfback. Uh, interesting. I think David Montgomery is... Very good, but I guess fourth round, I don't really mind too much. Benny Snell is probably a little bit better. I don't think Bryce Love is a first-round player. He's missing some players, I'll tell you. Oh, I didn't see LJ Scott at first. All right, that's not too bad. Damian Harris should be probably the second back in here. I love, love, love David Montgomery. Very underrated player. Watched his tape this past week. Very good. Interesting receiving rankings. Don't care about this too much. Not mad about it. Colin Johnson's where he probably should be. Big Colin Johnson guy. David Sills is ranked, I think, appropriately, even though I think he's a very good player. Where is Albert? Oh. He doesn't have Albert Okwa Ibanam in this draft class. Albert Okwa Ibanam out of Mizzou is probably the best tight end in this class. Noah Fant is good. Probably should be listed as a second-round player. Albert Okwa Ibanam is phenomenal. And still, he's not in here. I can't really talk much about offensive linemen. Haven't gotten to that yet. Nick Bosa, Rashawn Gary, Cleveland Farrell. I know a lot of people won't care about this, but I, I am curious. I'm not a fan of this class, I will say. I think it's better than what we've seen, just by rankings alone. Not even overall. Like Josh Allen, respected. Devin White, I think, is a clear best middle linebacker in this class right now. 
Uh, cornerback, Grady Williams should be number one. Ken Webster, interesting. He was one of the best cornerback prospects a couple of years ago, and then he has some off-the-field stuff. Haven't kept up with him this year. Taylor Rapp, Chauncey Gardner-Johnson's good. All right, so he is missing some players, and he has some players where I think uh, they're not in the best spot. And the mid-round seems to be fairly empty. But overall, not terrible. I'd give him like a C plus. NFL draft time. I haven't really told you guys uh, what I'm planning in this one. Because I'm not really even sure myself. What I will say is that we have the 19th pick. And we need to get better overall. So as much as I would like to trade up and get one of these studs, Nick Bosa, Ed Oliver... You know, Greedy Williams looks not that good at all. He really doesn't, which I think is unfortunate for us because we're in need of a cornerback, maybe. I mean, we brought in Trevor Williams, so it's not at the top of my list. But I think we have more holes than not. No second-round pick. I don't think I can rationalize trading up here, unfortunately. Jets take Ed Oliver, 85 overall. That honestly feels about right. I know that seems high, but I like it for the draft class. He didn't look like he'd be an 85, but I like that. Devin White, 82. Cleveland Farrell, 83. I kind of like these overalls, to be fair. AJ Brown, 81. So it's hard to judge a class off rankings alone. The overalls, I think, are pretty good. Greedy Williams, around an 80. I like that. DeAndre Baker. I will tell you, Nick Bosa has not been taken. That's very interesting. Let's see who the Bills take. They go Nikhil Harry, and the Bucks are on the clock. We might try to trade up. All right, trade accepted. We're giving them Chris Carson a 4 and a 2 next year for the 10th overall pick. They were real high on Chris Carson. The Bucks need a running back very badly, so we got away with that situation, trading someone that I don't want to be our starting running back. We are trading away our starting running back, but I want the starter to be Rashad Penny. Nick Bosa is going to be the pick here. Welcome to Seattle. He is an 82 overall and apparently ranked number one in true talent. We took him at number 10. He has star development. Where's the long hair? I need the flowing locks of Nick Bosa. Should be a higher overall. Should be like an 83, 84, but I'm, I'm okay with 82. 80 speed, 84 power move, 81 finesse move. He's versatile, 89 strength, 84 block shed. Good hit power. Very good player to get. We still have a first-round pick in this draft class. Sure, we gave away our second next year. That kind of sucks, but I think it's worth it to acquire uh, one of the best players in this draft class. Rashawn Gary, 81. I don't mind that. Marvell Tell at a USC. Bryce Love goes to the Dolphins. Colts take Christian Wilkins out of Clemson. I think should be a higher overall than 75. David Edwards to the Giants who take a tackle. Alabama linebacker, I mean, defensive end, Raquan Davis. I thought he was an edge, like outside linebacker. Goes to the Panthers. Anyway, edge, outside linebacker, defensive end. It doesn't matter, depending on the scheme. Cam Smith goes to the Cowboys. And we are on the clock. Now, I'd love to take Josh Allen again. But he is more of an edge. We'd probably have to convert to a 3-4 to get him to work. And I guess I'd move Frank Clark inside to 3-4 defensive end, which I don't love. So Josh Allen doesn't really make that much sense here. And we don't have a lot else scouted, unfortunately. We're going to take Greg Little here out of Ole Miss. Don't know too much about him based on his top skills. Should be fairly decent. First round projected. Again, I wish I knew anything about his top skills. I don't usually do this, but I imported the draft class too late, so I don't have like any of these players scouted, unfortunately. Dwayne Brown, retired. So we need a tackle. Greg Little is the pick. 77 overall, normal development. I, I knew it was a glitch. He's not ranked number one. Neither was Bosa. 81 run block, 78 pass block. Great strength for him. All right, welcome to the Seahawks, Greg Little. We're going to need you to perform. And our next pick does not come until the third round. Round three, and some of these top quarterbacks are still available. Will Greer, Justin Herbert have not been taken. That is unbelievable. We're going to take Ken Webster, though, out of Ole Miss. 72 overall. Uh, going to help fill in some of the gaps there. Good speed. Man coverage is not there. Zone coverage is okay. No catching. Ken Webster, not that great in this class. 
which I guess I don't really have a huge problem with. Fifth round now. Both of the top QBs are off the board. Ryan Finley's here. Chris Boyd's here out of Texas. Hook him horns. Not that good, honestly. Who would we take? Clayton Thorson's here. Don't really need a quarterback. But we don't have a backup. You know what? Yeah, let's go Ryan Finley. Let's go Ryan Finley. Former Boise State. Uh, NC State player. 66 overall. Seems criminal for Ryan Finley. Should probably be closer to a 70, but good lord. Alright, he's a backup QB. <laughs> That's all you can say about that. The huge problem with this draft is there's almost no depth. You sort through the offensive linemen, it's all undrafted or late 7th round at this point, and we're only in the 6th. There's so many undrafted players, it is just unreal. We'll take Mitchell Wilcox, another tight end to add to the mix. 65 overall is terrible. Good lord. This class is just like, I don't mind taking a 65 overall in the 6th round as we're going to simulate to the end. But it feels like it was so top heavy, it's unbelievable, and that's just not good for balancing. Decent class overall. New starting left tackle in Greg Little. Nick Bose is going to start. That's going to be awesome. And then Ken Webster is probably going to be our nickel cornerback uh, if he plays much at all. So, could have been a lot worse. Could have been better, obviously. But adding Nick Bose, I think, is, is so paramount to our success. And we might go ahead and flip Frank Clark and Nick Bosa around. All right, so great catch by me. Great catch. I look over. I open up OBS away from uh, some NFL games. And I had no mic. No mic was registering. But I look back through the video. I only missed a couple of moments of me speaking. So basically, this is the team, blah, blah, blah. We're at the midseason mark now. I'm using a roster or the draft class I think we used last time for 2020. So Najee Harris is number one. We got Jeffrey Simmons, uh, blah, blah, blah. This guy has like like spaces, like two spaces after the name sometimes, which is really annoying, but we're going to deal with it. It's not that big of a deal. We are one and two. This is not the midseason mark. Okay, we're almost there. Just wanted to put the lineup in. So I guess let's go ahead and simulate to the midseason mark. I want to turn on auto scouting. So that starts. So Bobby Wagner is our top priority impending free agent. Russell Wilson's here as well. Jerron Reed, Barkevius Mingo, Jerron Brown. Got to bring back the top three guys no matter what. Even though Jerron Reed like isn't that good. It looks like 75 block shed, 69 power move. I mean, his power moves are nice. But he doesn't look that good. So we brought back the top three guys. Bobby Wagner, Russell Wilson, and Jerron Reed. That was extremely necessary for the production of the team. We need Russell Wilson, we need Bobby Wagner, and Jerron Reed is our top defensive tackle right now. So we're all good from that point. We just have to get better on offense. It starts with the offensive line. It is a high priority this offseason to improve the offensive line. Very high priority. And we missed the playoffs again. We went 7-8-1. A very slightly worse record than last year. It is what it is. We're not there yet. Offensively, it's just, it's too bad of a team. And I am probably going to look to move on from Rashad Penny. He is just not progressing at a high enough rate at all. Only a 77 overall without confidence being a factor. We're going to need to improve at receiver. This is a tough, realistic rebuild. We're going to have to spend a lot of money. And we do have a lot of money. We're going to have to spend a lot of money in free agency in order to make this team a team that can compete. Offense is better this year. 4,200 yards, 33 touchdowns, only nine picks for Russell Wilson. And Ryan Finley getting some action out here. Three touchdowns, no interceptions. I don't even know when he's getting in the game, but good for him making those count. Rashad Penny, almost 1,000 yards, only three touchdowns. No yards per carry. That's terrible. Two 1,000-yard receivers, though. Jerron Brown, Doug Baldwin. Ten touchdowns for Jerron Brown in the slot. Six for Tyler Lockett. Blocking. 10 sacks a lot for Greg Little. Not terrible. His rookie year, especially with Madden Simulation. Bobby Wagner had a great season. Quarterback sacks, 6 for Frank Clark, led the team. We got almost no pressure. And then interceptions, we were not very adept at forcing turnovers, unfortunately. Forced fumbles, only 2 for the entire team. Both credited to Bobby Wagner. Recovered both of them. And, of course, no defensive touchdowns. When you're not forcing turnovers, you're not going to be able to get defensive turnover or defensive touchdowns as Matt Ryan wins MVP. No Seahawks in there. NFC Offensive Player of the Year is Matt Ryan. Russell Wilson at 6. Defensive Player of the Year, Matt Taiteo. 
Bobby Wagner at six. Offensive Rookie of the Year as LJ Scott, no Seahawks. And then Defensive Rookie of the Year is Devin White. For the Cardinals, Nick Bosa at number three. And Ken Webster at number eight. Heading into free agency, here are my uh, positions in need. Here are my positions in need. Doug Baldwin is an 84 overall. He regresses every year. We need a wide receiver. We need a running back. Any position on the offensive line, tight end, defensively, outside linebacker, outside linebacker. We could transition to a 3-4. Now would be the time. Jerron Reed could play nose tackle, but I'd likely want him more as a 3-4 defensive end. Frank Clark can play outside linebacker. Nick Bosa can play outside linebacker. Bobby Wagner up the middle. We'd get another linebacker. We are weak at a lot of positions here. We're going to need a big draft. We have $75 million to spend. Who wants to become a Seahawk? Derrick Henry? Austin Eckler, maybe? Austin Eckler, I think. All right, moment of truth here. We got Derrick Henry. Shaq Thompson rejected. Darren Lee accepted. David Onyemata accepted. Keelan Cole and Taylor Decker accept. So our receiving core gets a bit of a makeover with the addition of Keelan Cole. Our offensive line improves as Greg Little will transition to right tackle. Taylor Decker will play left tackle. I like that. Still need to upgrade the inside of the offensive line heavily. Still need to upgrade tight end. These are things that must change if we're going to be more successful in this next season and make the playoffs in year three. Defensively, still trying to think about what I want to do. Darren Lee is going to play outside linebacker. I think we're going to stay in a 4-3. Darren Lee's overall is probably going to go up to near an 80. He was an outside linebacker at Ohio State, ran an incredibly fast 40, like 4-4-9 or something ridiculous for an outside linebacker. He goes up to a 79. It's a fine outside linebacker. We're fine there. Cornerback, I think we're good. Ken Webster is going to insert as my nickel corner. Defensive line overall is fine. Just looking to replace Shaquem Griffin. And on offense, got to improve the offensive line and tight end. All right, NFL draft time. We pick 12th overall. We have the 12th pick in every round of this draft. Except for... No, except for nothing. That's it. We have the 12th pick. No, we don't have a second. Okay, yeah, that was right. We did trade that away. But it is a 12th overall pick, and we need to make this pick count. You know what? Here's what we're going to do. We're going to take Mark Heath Palmer out of Nebraska, and he's going to play tight end for us. 80 overall, quick development. 92 speed, 89 acceleration, 83 catching, 86 catching traffic, 92 spec catch. Good medium route running, good short route running, deep route running could use some work. And break tackle 82. Not a tremendous blocker, but you know what? Neither is Evan Ingram for the Giants. There have been plenty of tight ends without good blocking. He's playing tight end for us. All right, time to address the offensive line. That is going to be a huge thing for us. There are a number of players available that we could select. It is the third round now. Who would I not want to miss out on the most? I think we need a guard. That's going to be Ross Carlson out of Florida State. Welcome to the Seahawks. 75 overall. He has decent lead blocking and impact blocking. Run blocking and pass blocking are not anything crazy. But somehow it is an upgrade. Now it's time for center. Warren Pyle out of Minnesota. Welcome to Seattle. Only a 72 overall. Good pass blocking. All of his pass blocking stats are good. All of his run blocking stats are underwhelming. Unfortunate that his attributes are not what I want them to be. I don't know how we're going to make this work. We're just going to trade down or uh, simulate for the rest of the draft. So I'll see you guys for the recap. Draft recap time. Only took a couple of players. Made our first pick count. Just because we really, really needed a tight end player. And we went out and got Keelan Cole. The receiving core is going to be as good as it gets probably. But you know what? Mark Keith. What an incredible name. <laughs> Well, uh, he's going to play tight end. It doesn't seem like a perfect fit, but we're in a vertical system. He's not going to be asked to block a whole lot. He's an 84 overall tight end. This is absolutely the play. He's not a blocker, but it's okay. Warren Pyle has been moved to left guard where he's a 73 overall. And unfortunately, this is as good as the offensive line is. It really is. I wonder if we could change the scheme a little bit. 
Still staying with the power run kind of style to fit in some of her offensive linemen a bit more. Not sure. I'll look into it and change, and if you guys see, I'll show you or whatever. All right, we went to run and shoot. The only thing Scheme Fit does is get XP to players. It doesn't affect playbook, play calling, anything like that at all. It, all it is is for XP purposes, so one of those on the offensive linemen to get them to develop as quickly as possible. For the rest, it is what it is. And then defensively, Shaquem Griffin's going to stay starting. We got Darren Lee on the outside, Bobby Wagner. Defensive line looks fairly good. David Onyemata starts this year. And yeah, this is what we're rolling with. At the midseason mark, we are 4-2-1 and one, as the Cardinals have the lead in the NFC West. Interesting. The 49ers are 0-8. Unfortunate for them. Interesting. Looks like Shaquille Griffin is our top free agent. Who else is here? Doug Baldwin, Bradley McDougald. Three players I'd like to bring back. Nas Jones is here too, but he no longer starts. So, yikes. Bradley McDougal, Doug Baldwin, Shaq Griffin all return. We're actually not doing too badly at this current moment in time. We're not doing too poorly. Just uh, got to separate ourselves in the NFC West. I think we're going to be able to do that. And that's going to start with... Actually, no, we're, we're going to keep Doug Baldwin where he is. We have finally made the playoffs at 9-5-2 after tying with the Giants. 27-27. I have it in my top left. We'll check out the schedule. See how we got here. We had a 9... What, 5-2, and two, was it? Tied against the Cardinals, which is a game we probably needed to win. And then tied against the Giants. Obviously, no force wins. But, you know, I should, dude. <laughs> Simulation is just way too inconsistent. And you can't make the playoffs with good teams. Which is super, super frustrating. We will upgrade the team. Russell Wilson up to a 92 overall. Of course, a lot of that is with confidence. A lot of this team, very happy that we finally made the playoffs. So, I will upgrade. We'll catch back. We'll go over some of the stats for the year. We'll see how we got here. This is the upgraded team. Well, I mean, we didn't touch, what is this? Shalom Luani, former USC guy. Or Washington State. I don't know why I thought uh, USC for a minute. But, of course, uh, he went to Washington State. And a couple of guys have upgrades I didn't even see. We'll just have the CPU take care of it. Not too bad there. And we are up to an 84 overall. 87 defense with 87 offense. I think this team will be able to compete. Not the best we've ever built. But not bad either. All right, we have the Eagles in the wild card. Time to play the moments and see what this team can do. You better believe I'm going to Markeith Pinner. And when I was doing the upgrades, it said he went to Nebraska. Dude, I could have sworn that he got recruited to USC. I might have to look that one up. All right, big first quarter drive. We're going to hop in, hopefully take the lead over the Eagles. It is snowing here at CenturyLink. Shocked we have home field, but I guess the Eagles with a better record than us were a wild card team and we won our division. So there you go with that. Or is this is this a wild card game? I didn't see. It very well may be. I'm not sure what gives us home field in that case. Because we won our division? It would have to be. Scrambling with Russell Wilson. Oh, does it feel nice to have a mobile quarterback? I want to go pin or deep. Wow, okay. Looks like Taylor Decker doesn't want to block. So it doesn't matter what I want to do. We're going to take off again with Wilson. You're going to have to put out a QB spy. I can do that all day. 12 yards on that one. Hand off now to Derrick Henry. Looks like the CPU run block, or excuse me, run uh, block shedding is still ridiculous on all Madden with the fault sliders. Love to see that. Our offensive line's bad. You know what? I'm going to take that back. Maybe it's not. Who knows? We're going to go one-on-one. -on -one. It's Markeith Pinner showing off the spectacular catching abilities, going up and making a fantastic play with a mismatch. It's always going to be a mismatch with him on the field. You can't have that type of speed and spectacular catchability at tight end and not generate mismatches. High point to him. Can't get the feet down. You know what? It is like an end goal situation from the two. We might as well do what the Seahawks don't usually do and run the ball with our power back, Derrick Henry. And that's what happens. A touchdown. Super Bowl over. 
Malcolm Butler who? Okay, so my recording went out. I need to I need to restart my computer and update this because this is pretty ridiculous at this point that I keep getting so many errors that happen. They're going to ruin my video. This one doesn't ruin it so much, but it's a little bit unfortunate because I did miss some stuff there at the end. Basically, we were in the playoffs, and now we're not in the playoffs. We lost 24-7. to I think that moments needs to be revamped because I was down 17-7. I'm just pressing X to get to the next moment, you know? And um, it doesn't give me a moment. We turn over the football twice. Twice this happened. And then we lose 24-7 to because the CPU is turning over the ball. And I'm not get, even getting a chance to tie it up. So we won 27-20 over the Falcons. You guys can see that in the top left. I've moved my face cam for this, uh, this episode. I think it was good. But that's going to do it for the video. We made the conference championship. And unfortunately, that's all we're going to do. That's all we're going to go as far as we're going to go. It was fun, though. Appreciate you guys watching. Hope you guys enjoyed. And I will see you guys in the next one. Take it easy.